Are you ready to go, Curtis? Yep. Welcome, everyone, to episode number 71 of the Broken by Concept podcast, the best League of Legends solo queue educational podcast in the world. Coming at you today with some world's action, sort of. We oh, got yeah. a tweet to break down. Oh, yep. Um, East versus West. Eastern philosophy versus Western philosophy. We talked a little bit about that in Sun Tzu with our BBC book club. We did. If anyone wants to join our Broken by Concept book club, there's a link in the, yep. the description below. Sun Tzu. We, that was a good one, actually. That was good. And we got the VODs that you can come back and watch them, you know? like Even if we like pass the book, you can like read it yourself and then look at the discussion with the that community. That was probably one of the books that people had the most mixed reviews in it. Yeah. I mean, some people really liked it. Some people didn't click, but then after the discussion, they really liked it. Yeah, that was interesting. A bit of a spicy one, that one. So uh, there we go. That's a nice little plug Flip for that. channel still. Flip rock and rolling. Yep. All right. So the League of Legends World Championship, East versus West. It's such a cool rivalry these days, you know? It used to be like, I guess in like traditional sports, it's sort of like country versus country. You know, it's like Australia versus England in yep. like the cricket cricket and stuff yep. like that and all that and then in esports is like east versus west well i would say it's even more that more so china versus korea china is crazy yeah well then because like because like because the east is so theoretically far ahead mm. that like it becomes the the china east versus v korea east v east you know yeah it's like the next thing all right so this is by a man named clement chu I don't even know what he does these days, to no, be honest. No idea. <laughs> this, I don't even know who he is, I'll be honest. <laughs> this is a, good, a great tweet, dude. Yep. I don't know, it popped off viral. It popped up on your feed and then you linked it to me, I yeah, think. Yeah, I thought it was interesting. Um, So the tweet is, with so much talk, the gap between the East versus West this year, I'd like to share some of the common terminology in Chinese from coaching and casting that I found conceptually useful. Language can definitely help you think. So he has a thread and then he has a couple. Right, so so have, this is a guy who works in LPL yeah. some way, shape, or form. Yeah. So he speaks the uh, speaks Mandarin. Yep. So that's and he shared. Awesome. So basically, he he went ahead and shared with us Western without with us Western plebs. Is that yeah, you call Western us? plebs? How they I guess language they use in reference to league into league, like little like little tip picks. So the yeah. first one here is, for example, a, a reactive pick. Um, refers to a player or position having a pick after seeing the opponent's pick. It's a broader concept than counter pick, which often assumed to be lane counters. You can round out a comp, something that isn't countered. Right. So an example of, say, like a reactive pick would be, you're not really picking for your lane. You're picking for the comp holistically. So for example, um, I let you know, we've seen a lot of Poppy at Worlds, right? Poppy is like an interesting one. Poppy is not really a count. You wouldn't, we'll say, we'll talk, let's, talk, let's talk about top Poppy, even though it's not played at Worlds. Mm. But say your last 5P five, five P in the draft you might even pick Poppy into something top that doesn't really win lane, kind of goes even, but it's like... Good, good against the their comp overall. overall yeah. is good. Yeah. I'm assuming that's what he means, right? Yeah. Yeah, for example, let's say if I am in a game, right? And I... Let's say a really bad matchup for me in the jungle is Jarvan would be like... Uh, Graves, right? right? But I'm against a bunch of like immobile mages like... Uh, like let's say it's like a Zyra brand bot lane or like a Seraphine Sona bot mid. lane and Ori mid, yeah. you know, it's like... Regardless of what the doesn't matter. Is, it doesn't even matter. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, it's like at the end of the day, fights and stuff, it's like, I'm going to be able to do my job better than Graves can do his, yeah. you know? I just have to play the game a certain way. So I think that's what that means. But yep. I mean, draft, to be honest, that's probably the worst one we could pick because yeah. that does... That's pretty useless. <laughs> that's useless for the average solo that. queue player, you know? Like we say, don't think about the don't pick. Don't care about that. <laughs> Damn mastery, so... I do apologize, guys. I hope no one stopped the podcast there because oh, they're no, like Nathan, reactive pick. <laughs> and they're like, <laughs> and they're like, they like go off. Like that's what that's the only thing I took from this podcast <laughs> before we got to like it's just not that useful. And they're like they're in solo queue, like a reactive pick, reactive. Oh pick. no, champ mastery, guys. Okay, focus on your pool. This is that's a competitive term, you know. All right, here we go. Turn, uh, as in turn to establish vision. Usually there is an ebb and flow with teams grouping, split pushing, and vision being placed in different parts of the map. Having the concept of turns allows teams to calculate how many terms and where vision should be. I mean, that's pretty straightforward. That's yeah. in the West as well. That's in the, yeah, we use yep. that as well, turn. Like the chess turn analogy. It's like, yep. you know, I, the support their places, turn, our turn. the support places all their wards, then they have to reset yep. and then the enemy clears all the wards and then that's they place their theirs. Turn. Yep, yeah, just back and forth. Back and forth. Uh, we got one num. 
used to describe situations where there is simply too much crowd control on the opponent's side, making a champion pick feel numb, considering adding more divers or shift drafts. So th- this was an interesting one. I did like this one. So numb, the word numb. So uh, one thing I want to caveat this entire thing with is that language and specifically analogies are great for allowing someone to understand a concept to a deeper level or even adopt a certain mindset during the game, during like a helps. specific yeah. moment. Yeah. And I, and I love language and, I, and, and this is what I feel as though when I, when we were looking at Sun Tzu, they, and something I learned about the, the Chinese language and, and, and Mandarin and stuff is that they have a much more in-depth, colorful language. They can describe things. With one a, word means a lot more like one symbol or whatever. Well, they can say a lot with not many words yeah. or they can, they can, the, the, the analogy I use was that it kind of feels like the English language uh, is, it's kind of like three dimensional, whereas Mandarin is like four dimensional. It's like, there's like another layer. There's like another sense to their, their language. And when you have another sense or, okay, for example, let's use the, the analogy of food. Imagine if you didn't know what spice was like you'd never like you, your entire life you had never had spice and then you traveled to india and then you had your first dish with a hint of spice you would think how and imagine if no one told you the word spice that was spicy like you wouldn't really know how to describe that feeling because it would be a sense that you wouldn't really spice doesn't mean anything yeah you wouldn't really know how to describe that it was just another it's like another dimension and then once you get familiar with so the eastern way of saying spice like means no i'm not really more? taking it like literally i'm just yeah. saying uh, from a from a human like your mouth and your tongue like if you hadn't had spicy food before and then randomly you went to india and had your first spicy dish it's like a, it's not just a different flavor it's a different sense like it's a different feeling in your mouth that you had never experienced before let's say you were brought up in an orphanage you had porridge for the whole entire life you yeah. never had anything spicy <laughs> you, you see what i'm getting at or not no i'm struggling i'm struggling <laughs> people you're gonna help in the me chat out right now come on no Curtis, i think you have to help me i bet you okay. there's a lot of people that are thinking my way okay let's, 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 so yeah. what i'm okay so the main point i'm trying to get across nathan is i that, need a better example here okay another example yeah. um okay let's say um i'm i'm trying to describe the the feeling of um eating a chili okay so we're back on the <laughs> yeah we'll go back to food so food i think is the perfect example okay and if yeah. you've never had spicy yeah. food before if i've never had so spicy imagine food. if you'd grown up and you'd had basic like yeah. meat and veg yeah zero spice yeah um, not even from pepper. Like you've had no spice, no okay. scent. That that feeling hasn't been in your in your mouth before. Yeah, but you've heard of the word. Yeah, let's just even say you've heard of the of word, course you right? Yeah, yeah, that's realistic. But like when you taste it, it's like you now know there's like a whole new world that you haven't explored before. It's like wow, that that the that's why a lot of people have chili for the first time. They hate it at the start, but as they build, they start to explore it. Like oh wow, that's actually really interesting. Like it adds it. It's another layer of complexity to a dish. Yeah. Hence why now, even now, like I'll add like chili flakes, like spaghetti bolognese or things like. It's just boring. It's bland without it, and so um, in Mandarin, in in their language, they have like an element of it's like another level of depth to explain things or an environment or a color they can they can add more depth okay another example let's say the color in in color let's say we have basic colors you would have like red to orange on a spectrum like for us like the way i envision it and this is i don't know if this is the case but like in the english language we might have like red and then like light red and then burgundy burg- well, that's darker but like getting lighter to orange okay like i guess light red and then that's pinkish. What you get. I was like, oh, that's what you get right yeah. and then it's like orange or something was but in the in, in mandarin there would be like there would be words to describe the subtle changes in color towards orange if that makes sense mind-blowing yeah so there'd be so you could describe things with more depth or more d- in a more specific manner got it does that make sense yeah it does right so I we don't have those words so we actually don't have words yeah. to describe how th- what they're actually meaning so when we read sun Tzu, for example 
um, they would have to really use weird, like they would have, there's many, many, it's hard to translate Mandarin into English because we just don't have the vocabulary Got it. to input that. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. So, so, and what, that's why I found this tweet so interesting. So, so yeah. So, but I, because I asked you about the spice, right? Does the spice, there's different ways of saying spice. Well, is that I, what you're the reason I said spice specifically is that because you, when you think of taste, you would think of like. You would think of first texture, so it'd be like, like it crunchy, crunchy or like you know soft. Yeah. Then you would think of like hot or cold. Mm. That's like another like variable. Then you would think of like maybe sweet or sp- sweet or sour, right? So th- these are all like variable or like ways to think about food, right? But spice is another one of those. It's another category. So they'll have like words it's for like eighty like percent another... spice and sixty percent spice and forty. I'm assuming spice. so. Yeah, but 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 just. Uh, it's, you're forgetting that spice itself as like a subcategory in, in it just it just imagine it like you've never had it before it's like another layer it's like it's like never having heard anything before we have taste we have sight we have smell and we can hear mm. imagine there's like another one of those okay it's like another sense okay like that's the way you that's why at least i perceive yeah the the another layer of complexity okay um of depth yeah so <laughs> this is like something I'm going to explain in the third dimension. To you. <laughs> the fourth dimension. That's something explaining the fourth dimension. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's what, anyway, that's what, that's why I found these really interesting because we know that if you can describe something in another, with another level of depth, yeah. you can get across the concept way easier. And so I like that one numb, for example. I mean, that's an interesting usage of, of the word to describe like how a Katarina will feel into a heavy CC composition. So usually what you'll hear, and I remember thinking back to Diewolves, if I if we picked um, Syndra into a heavy dive composition, Get Back, I remember Get Back would say things, I just feel useless. Yeah. But that's not, there's no word to describe how he feels. He would feel pressured, I guess. Yeah. But that could, could feel pressured so, from so many different ways. Mm. Numb is a very specific form of feeling pressured, isn't it? Like they're like... You do feel fr- suppressed. Yeah, suppressed in a way, I guess. But that would even feel vague. Imagine if a place that I feel suppressed. What the <laughs> fuck does that mean? You know. So, but like that. Notice how that is a very specific term to describe how you would be feeling, and it actually makes sense. Yeah. So imagine how a Syndra, and I felt this many times. How you, you feel like you're playing Oriana or Syndra, and you just feel like you can't do anything. You feel pressured. But even pressured, it's still vague. You don't really know what that means. Pressure could mean like. You're pressured in that certain moment versus mm. overall. Mm. It's like, let's say it's like the positioning of the team versus I'm pressured because their enemy team. Or do you feel pressured because they have too ults. much burst? Do you feel pressured because they have too much CC? Do you have feel pre- what, what, why do you feel pressured specifically? But n- numb, the word numb, that is specific to the the situations where the opponent feels like they they you know there's too much CC they can't move. I, I like that. I just feel like they feel very. Yeah, they can't do anything. I think that's a really that's a perfect example of like another layer, right? Um, continuing on, you want me to keep reading them, Curtis? Well, we can go through the key ones. I mean, we don't have to go through. I think we can. Here. How many are there? Holy shit, there's a lot. There's a lot. I think we go through the ones that like I think are relevant. to Okay, uh, you like the? Uh, I like the kitchen. The kitchen knife. The kitchen comp. knife comp. This one is purely for flavor. Describes full physical. Slash short range comps that act crazy because they need to win early. Kitchen knife is a frenzied, desperate weapon which makes it so fit in. I love that. That's like, such a beautiful kitchen knife comp. Yeah. Like that's such it's a like cool... this kitchen you just you like trying to. Start. Well, what champs when it would spring to mind when you think of that? Um, Samira. Yeah, I think of Renekton. I think of Renekton. Renekton. I think of like even Gwen in a weird way. Gwen. Like they're just low range, low engage. Like they just got to get ahead, and if they're not strong, like they just don't do much. Um, what are some others? Like low utility, more like damage. So the mindset is when you're playing as a kitchen knife comp, um, you need to play more crazy. You want fights, yeah. You crazy, want fights. you want fights. Yeah, like a yeah. kitchen knife. Yeah. What's well, say a knife is frenzied, a desperate weapon, which makes, which makes it so fitting. And if you were to say, oh, guys, we've ever seen a kitchen knife comp. Yeah, that would, that would, that would get you in a mindset. mindset. Like, okay, this is what I can expect. They, from they wouldn't want to fight all the time. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Like, that's their strength. That's a good question. Um, 
I like the... What else do we have here? I like the pitch battle one here. Pitched battle? Team fight scenario where both teams have time to set up, form ranks, and anticipate enemy approaches. Mm. Objective fight sieges are usually such and comps are better or worse or at pitched battles. Yeah, pitched battles. So that's sort of like saying like, like they have more control. set up. Yeah. yeah, more set up. Like Elise is really good yeah. in like with a in a pitched battle But situation. I was also thinking more like, okay, they're all on vision, we're all on vision. Yeah. So I was thinking more champs like Zoe and like... Um, like poke champs. Yeah, zone control poke champs. Like Because then you're not afraid of getting engaged on. Yeah. And you know where they are and think, yeah, so that would be like a... That's what I. That's the way I perceive this one. Yeah. Um, interestingly enough, um, I think there's a there's a word that I would love to have in to describe this. Nathan, let's break this down. And and, and this this kind of stemmed from me watching a few games at Wells, but I think this is very prevalent in solo queue. Okay, so this is a bit off off topic here, but something I feel. So one of my favorite tools in solo queue to determine like kind of like the, I guess the meta or if something is strong or weak is if it's annoying to verse, right? Remember we said that. If something is annoying to verse... It's probably pretty strong. It's probably strong. Like, mm. it's it's probably underrated. Mm. A common example, I remember when when um, there was... For example, I'm like, you would think, oh, um, what's a common one? Um, Elise. Like, Elise is, like, annoying to verse for certain players. Or, like, okay, what's a better... Rengar. I'll say right now, <laughs> Kiana Jungle. Okay. Because she's anno- annoying in the sense that that W thing. Okay, no, pushes. better example, Yumi. Uh, Yumi yeah, is okay. annoying. Yeah. And, and what happened? Yumi's being like first picked at Worlds. Yeah, yeah. Yumi was annoying in yeah. solo queue. Yeah. And it's annoying to beat. It's yeah. just annoying. Yeah. Right? And when something is annoying, you can't usually ignore that. And now it's like first picked at Worlds. Like an right? annoying chance will eventually become meta. Yeah, annoying chance will either be so annoying that you have to either pick them or have a direct counter answer to them. Yeah. Sometimes annoying can be in the sense that they force you to buy... I hate gems that force you to buy, buy heal cut. Or like a Skana ult with yeah. QSS. Skana ult. Even Twisted Fate is annoying for a lot of people. Like, Malzahar's annoying. Yeah. Malzahar yeah. is bloody annoying. Yeah. Nocturne ult is annoying. Mm. Nocturne ult is very annoying. And Nocturne, I find, to be an incredibly good solo queue pick. Yeah. So anyway, my point being, um, something I've found to be a very underrated champion is Wukong. Wukong in, in my solo queue, whenever there's a Wukong, I'm just scared. Like, Wukong is so annoying to verse. Even when you play mages? Yeah, because he just does so much damage and, like, fights are too chaotic and he can he can just do too much in a skirmish. Like, you can go, you know, decoy, invisibility, no, AoE knockups, a lot of damage, survivability. I think Wukong's kit's really good, I mean... The kit is just annoying, but that's it's good. And it was picked in worlds. And, and, and I found that to be an interesting, like... The feeling that he gives me, I don't have a word to describe it though. It's like I'm in a river fight, prepping for dragon, and I know they're there. And it's like if there's a Wukong there, there's a feeling, I guess I feel threatened, but I know he can't kill me, but he will chunk me really hard and he'll probably burn my flash. And he'll draw and he'll people create in. Space. He'll draw people in, create space. They get knocked space. up as well. And, and what I've noticed at Worlds is that these champions have dominated the meta. Champions that can create space. Kennen creates a metric ton of space in fights. Wukong creates a metric ton of space in fights. There are these champions that, that are getting picked. Yumi and like, like there's these champions that just like, you got to respect and they're, they're annoying. And what, and, and, and I hate this. The reason I brought this up is because I don't like using the word annoying and annoying is like a, it's like input basic word mm. to describe my inadequacy to describe the situation. <laughs> That's that's how I feel. I feel limited by my yeah. vocabulary to yeah. describe how I feel, and because yeah. I you want to be able to say and say a certain type of annoying. Yeah, I want to be able to say exactly the word that is is giving me that feeling. An Eastern language provide will provide that. Yeah, an Eastern language. Yeah, that's my main point. Is that Eastern language gives you the ability to pinpoint how what type of annoying because what Yumi how annoying Yumi is is very different to how annoying Nocturne is, which is ha- very different to how annoying. Wukong is, which is annoying. It's very different to how Kiana, in a way. They're all annoying in differing ways, but it's not intuitive in the Western language to Mm. be able to pinpoint Mm. what that feels like. Mm. And to get across feeling, and I think this ties, you know, flows on from our book book club discussion that we had with Sun Tzu, is that um, 
Sun Tzu describes how situations can bring about a certain feeling. And I feel like the East are much more in touch with their feelings and their emotions. Western's logical. Yeah, we're very logical. Like, I always think of, like, logical, like, German engineering or something, you know? I think of, like... like the Silicon Valley, like, yeah. tech companies. And I think of, like, logical this, logic. But then there's, like, a, there's like an element of, I guess... It's not, it's not spiritual. It's just, like, they're not spiritual, I'd say. They're just more in touch with how they feel. They're... What's our version of monks? What's the Western version of being a monk, Curtis? Like a priest? A priest. <laughs> they don't have the best rap, though, do they? <laughs> What do you reckon? They get a bit more controversial than monks as, as yeah, people. No we don't really, we have, don't really one. have one because you're right. And and it's interesting because Dr. K, right? Dr. K is big on Eastern philosophy, philosophy isn't yeah. he? Like he, he, or at least from psych, psychiatric or psychological, he takes inspiration from the his Indian Hinduism, Hinduism right? right? He, yeah. takes, he takes a lot of learnings from like the Buddhas and stuff like that. For good reason, because they are more in touch with their emotions mm. and a lot of mental health is directly correlated with, you know, you're in, being in touch with your emotions and yourself. So, um, yeah, so I was trying to give you a whole diff a whole range of different examples, tying all the way back from that Get Back example, playing Sindra into a Zach or Jarvan, you know, saying I feel pressured or I feel annoyed or I feel like I can't do anything. I just very... Ugly. It's ugly. Brute, brute for, it's like I feel like a. I wonder if like a Neanderthal trying to explain duh, 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 how do I feel here. You the know? moment you mention that, I think of Twitch chat, right? I, I wonder. Wait, does someone's got to tell me? Is there like a Pog version of like of that in Eastern? Right, like, like you're Pog saying certain emotes. Pog so certain emotes, the emote culture is that like a thing? Interesting. It could be the case. It could be like emotes do. I mean, they are. Emotes are more yeah, than... Yeah, emotes... But that's the emote itself. But remember, we turn our emotes into words. They're words, basically. Well, they're words, they? right. Like you know? people and Peep stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if they do the same in Easter or they just post the emoji. Because posting the emoji would make more sense, but we turn them into words. Is that a thing? I don't know. Maybe I'm just overthinking this. I, I'm very ignorant in this sort of topic from your, your understanding, Curtis. Because... I mean, language is something that, you know, I think there's a whole... I mean, you could go down that rabbit hole. Again, we're, we're, we're not really that educated when it comes to language. <laughs> but I'm assuming you're right. Maybe there is uh, in the West, we use, you know, these weird terms to describe situations. I mean, that's it's a similar thing, isn't it? Yeah. Like the piss lows and the, yeah. <laughs> and the peepos and the pog champs. I mean, they're technically getting across an emotion or a feeling, that's isn't right. it? That's right, yeah, yeah. I sag like the classic sag yeah. like, oh, like what is I genuinely I still to this day don't know what sag <laughs> means no like, I, if you put a gun to my head I couldn't tell you what sag means <laughs> like when I remember when I tuned into like Ellis's stream yeah. she's sag 24 sag what does can yeah. someone please educate me what sag means yeah. I genuinely don't know no um, I'm a bit of a we're boomers over here Nathan we are but anyway, I just thought that's an interesting one, you know, and, and maybe maybe we need to take the time to, you know, write down, create, maybe we can create the next terminology. I'll tell you one really good one that um that one of my soul two clients, who was it? Was it Seth, I think? I think it was Seth. He he came up with one called the fly trap. Have you heard of it? No. Basically that's when the the jungler is camping that bush in between the lanes so they can't walk to the tower. Uh, behind. Which, where are we talking on the map? So, like, let's say for top lane. Yep. Oh, the Krugs. Yeah, the Krugs. The Krugs. yeah. Oh, and, they and then you pick them on the way yeah, back on the to way. the tower. Yeah, on the way. call the fly trap. Okay. Is that a cool one? It's cool, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that you could... Yeah. As long as it makes sense. I guess it makes sense. Because they, they're going to go there. Yeah. And you just... Yeah, it makes sense. It's a fly trap. It's a good one. And it's a actually. trap. It's a trap. And, and, they're like, and they're like a fly because they're so vulnerable, you know? And they have to go there. I mean, yeah. That's where they're going to go. I yeah. mean, they're lured to that yeah. location to get their farm. Yeah. Set up a fly trap. I mean, that's what competitive teams have to do. You remember we came up with like code words for things? We tried to do that in Die Wolves back in the day. I can't remember what some of them meant though. But we did. I know Jono definitely tried to do that with Die Wolves. Yeah, well, well, we had, we had like, some good ones. We did have some good ones. I remember the, the I remember one we used a lot, which was just slow, and we knew what slow meant. Remember when Sherm would say slow or like things like that. Yeah, there was the and 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 I remember there was like severities. It was like something on a on like a scale of how severe the situation was. 
Because I remember Chippy's default response was to say everything was like a game losing play. Yeah. And then it lost meaning. <laughs> yeah. And Jono used to use the analogy of the gr- the boy who cried wolf. Yeah, that's right. Because Chippy's would say every death was like the game was over. Yeah. But that just wasn't the case. And yeah. then as a result, Sherman would just ignore top because every time he said that, it was just annoying. Yeah, him. yeah. It's like, I need to know when I really do need to come. Like, because when, when someone says my, la- my lane's fucked, that can mean many different that's things. Right. When you say my lane's fucked, does that mean I, the game is like, I literally can't lane, I'm going to die? Does it mean I, I, the way like, frozen like I can, temporarily, I, I'm going to lose yeah. 12 creeps? Like, yeah. what does it mean? Yeah. Like, because these are all very differing scenarios. Does it mean, can I, can I farm from a distance and like get XP, but I can't get farm? Like, I actually can't last it. These are all, it's good. It's very important information to know because it's going to dictate your team's next move. Language, it has a massive effect. We're not utilizing it enough. We don't utilize it enough. Nathan. I don't use it a lot enough in my coaching. I mean, we use it analogies occasionally. Yeah. But I mean, you I want to have to... like a nice little thing. It's like, how good would it be? It's like you have a list and just like, you know, like literally there's Clements done here and just. Even if you could get clients to, to, to describe on a scale of like how severe they feel, like what I would love, you know, Nathan, do you feel like there's sometimes in your coaching sessions, you don't know how, how much they've tried to fix the problem. Like sometimes I would love to know, um, like people say, I, I, I'll ask them. So like, you know, how stuck are you? Got it. You know, and like, I would love to know on a, on a scale of like kind of one to 10, like in terms of words, like how stuck do they really believe they are? Do they think this is just like a small little thing that they, they could probably figure out with time? Or do, are they, are they like literally in the mud? Like just they, no idea. No idea. And I would yeah. love, and I think that is very important for us to know mm. from a coaching I perspective agree. you know things like that i mean i think there are applications in game and out of game that could you know help so were there any others from this list that you wanted to highlight well again a lot of the ones that i that we say as well like uh being first to the punch being beaten oh, beat, to the yeah, punch. beaten to the punch i love that they one. have won the first strike the, the ability first for strike. a team to start a fight on their terms a broad assessment based on range engage tools map um well, he says, I like this term a lot because in comparison, they have engaged doesn't really mean anything most of the time. Mm. Yeah, I like that. What would be a situation that would apply to that? Um, well, just because... Well, just because they have engaged, it, I'm assuming it also... Look, he says it depends on like the range, engage tools, map mobility, map control. Like, so like a Malphite with R versus a Malphite with Flash R yeah, yeah. is two different things. Yeah, yeah. And depending on they have engaged, but into the comp, like the enemy might just have a lot of disengage and um, they have all sums and they have zonias Stop and stuff like that. And yeah. stuff. So it really depends. So you would want to like a term that like we have engaged, but we can't actually we can't one fight, like, right, Or we, we have we have tools, but we need to wait like until they misposition. Or use a gap closer or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um. What is it? This one was interesting. Battlefield separation. Team fight tactic of wedging yourself between the enemy front line and the back line. You eat their carries while their tanks tickle you. Commonly used against teams heading towards barons and dragons from the banana brush and blue ramp. Team fight tactic of wedging yourself between the enemy front line and the back line. So it's like splitting. It's like it's like splitting the fight, isn't it? I'm pretty sure that's what it means. So what role would, what type of champs would be wedging themselves? As Commonly used against teams heading towards, ah, oh, so, so I'm assuming, so what that means, so imagine when you got like a team, they're coming, they're like, so one team's baiting Baron, for example, and then, um, and then you kind of have, and then they're, they're coming from like the banana brush, or like, let's say the blue ramp, and then you kind of come in from the side and you split the team and you have like, say like a, a Catalia wall come through the middle and then, then their tanks are separated from their back line and then you can just get straight onto the back line or things like that. Or what are some other terms I can do that? Or even maybe you have like a, a, uh, what else? My mind goes to tanks for some reason. Jarvan and Jarvan can kind of go over and like separate the fight with Cataclysm and get into the back line. Yeah. Like I'm assuming what it means is like when the team, you can split the fight because they're, they're, t- they're, they're coming in through a choke point. So rather than just playing the front to back team fight, you, you want to like separate the, you want to get onto their back line essentially. Is that zoning? 
It's kind of like splitting the fight, zoning, yeah. Because I would like use the term, it's like I'm like zoning their, their mm. back line. Or like I'm, um, I'm wasting their time or something. Yeah, wasting their time or something. Like I'm buying time, mm. you know? But regardless, so I think the biggest takeaway here and what, I mean, why I wanted to talk about this was less about the Chinese specifics here. It was more about the word, like having words for these yeah, terms, like, like, more... like the layer of the terms. Like we have like all these terms, like tempo, like tempo, like what does that actually mean? Has anyone actually got a definition for tempo? I defined it. I did define you it. You defined uh, it. On my video. Okay. But I don't remember the definition. Like we, we should have terms with extra layers, like the kitchen. Well, I describe a good tempo one. through an analogy nowadays. Yeah. Like with the Formula One Formula analogy. One, yeah, the pit stop. The pit analogy. stop. Yeah, I, like that's cool. how I do it. I stole that from you, by the way. It's I fine. Stole that from you, yeah. But, but I think, um, the, we need to think more about how we could use language to our advantage when bringing about a mindset or capturing a mindset. Maybe even this. Imagine, you know, when you think about um, those those blocks or those solo queue blocks where you're really feeling it. Mm-hmm. Like you can even think, like sometimes analogies to help can help you capture a, a moment or how you felt. And you can just describe how you felt in this moment with an analogy. Even that can help either recreate it or give a bit of insight into the coaching, the coach that you're working with to, to help replicate that. Cause sometimes we don't know how you feel. I mean, like you can try to describe how you feel, but analogies and trying to be a little bit more specific and granular about your, your language can help. I mean, there's many applications and I just think the East do it much better than the West. Just an interesting line of thought. Our language is just inferior, obviously. Yeah. I'm sure there's ways around it though. There's always a solution, right? That's an exciting challenge. Yeah. It's a good challenge. It's an exciting challenge. Let's uh, let's up our language game. Um, so moving on. Moving on. Where do you want to go? Where I want to I want to talk about critical thinking. Critical man. thinking, Curtis. What is critical thinking? How would you define critical thinking? Critical thinking is thinking about the everything about something. Like, it's really bad. <laughs> the positives, the negatives, the. It's like taking whole. Taking hold. Remember taking Everything hold from Sun Tzu? Sun Tzu, yeah. Taking hold. It's 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 encapsulating all the variables at play. At play. Yeah. You're looking the at biggest, it from every angle. The most interesting one that I always took from Sun Tzu was the emphasis on the psychology of putting yourself in their shoes. Right. So physical violence being not just about how much damage you're inflicting physically. Mentally. But mentally before the engagement, during the engagement, after the engagement. Mm. That and, and taking into account how the psychological effect will help will a will influence other people around that, the environment within that, how it will alter their behaviors. There is there's many, many factors. Taking hold essentially, right? You're looking at every variable in that given specific moment. And the reason I wanted to bring up critical thinking, Nathan... I'm literally going to define on Google right now. Define critical thinking. All right, Google, come on. Give us something good here. Here we go. This, this is about... The objective analysis and evaluation of an issue in order to form a judgment. Okay. I mean, that's a much more intelligent way of framing it, I guess. And this is why I've got the internet, Curtis. And then there's an example where professors often find it difficult to encourage critical thinking among their students. Does that sound relevant to us, Curtis? It does sound relevant. What I would say to everyone, not just to our, every, just the world, and my ourselves included, ourselves included, Nathan. Um, I don't think we are by any means amazing critical thinkers. No. Um, so where this all started, look, I found myself, Nathan. You know, I've been a bit. Sh- I've been in a bad mood recently. Right, I can't, I can't sometimes come to Nathan and I get shitty quickly. I, don't know, I, get, I sometimes get in shitty moods. Like as as we always said, there's two like you know, Curtis is the negative Nancy, and I'm like the over optimistic. You know, we balance each other. We do. Yeah, that's right. That's, so, that's just the, the, the feel. But sometimes it gets extreme on Curtis. It does get extreme. <laughs> well, no. Well, sometimes I just you know, this is not. It's not really to do. This is not really in reference to the my coaching clients it's not even really to do with that it's more relation just the the league community the way league is at right now as a whole and it's this is you know league what do you call it? league culture i guess yeah. and um i mean here's my positive optimistic spin okay. i guess okay it's very young everyone's young everyone's trying yep. to figure things out yep. you know people as we talked about you know people play games for many different reasons um uh, the way I always think about it is like, think about 
um, th- all the different type of people that is attracted to League of Legends. You know, the casual games are super competitive people like clashing. But like, if you think about it, like let's say if you sign up to like a karate class or something like that, you sort of like know what you're getting yourself into. It's like, you you know, it's like, you know, you're going to work pretty, like people that are like pretty disciplined, you know, people that want to like learn that sort of thing. And then you would have like another level. It's like, okay, well, you're, you're joining just like an average karate class versus I'm getting to teach it from the best karate instructor. Like there'll be a certain level of like expectation. You know what I mean? But there's no expectation going into league. That's like okay. the different. And that's why I think the community is, I, mean, I guess it's probably like it's the, hard to lump some of the community, isn't it? Yeah, it's very difficult to put. You can't put everyone. So in, many, so many, so many, many people. You know? Yeah, I totally agree. But like, like you know, it's like there's other groups. It's like this is like the cycling group. You know, it's like this is that group. Like, yeah, obviously there's different people going into that group, and there's probably. But I feel like there's just so much more into the league. Like, league is just so big. It's so it's big, massive. Yeah. Look, and then, and then you like subsection. It. It's like again, then it's like okay, well, the people for us is like well like all our communities is about really learning and um, like the most interesting thing is like people that come, like I don't have rules on my discord server for soul two. Like, like we have, we've had, had some, like maybe like four people like I've had to like ban over like the last literally like year or so that just didn't get it. But isn't that interesting? Mm. Because we're, we've you attracted just get it. You, you attract, we attract a certain type yeah, of person. Yeah. That like d- takes responsibility well, as a would watch the game. BBC. Not everyone would watch this podcast. That's right. No. Not everyone is going to like your content or my content yeah. or our coaching programs. We attract a certain, yeah, you're spot on. We attract a certain type of person. So when you say I'm angry with the league community in general. Oh, I'm not, I didn't say that. I said, I'm, I'm angry. I'm just like, angry. what section? Yeah, I'm not angry what? at anyone. Okay. I'm angry. Just, just from, from things I've seen. I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't pinpoint. I don't have anger directed at anyone. I'm just, I get frustrated. Okay. And I would say my frustration stems from a lack of, but look, this critical thinking I think is prevalent everywhere in every part, including our communities and ourselves. Okay. I would say this is across the board and this is not even league specific. This is in every, every industry, I would say to differing degrees. So, um, okay. Let's, 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 let's start with this. Um, in a way, I want to, and this is something I want to push more in my Midland Academy and even in my YouTube, is I want people to question me. Mm. I want people to ask me really dumb questions. I want people to ask me things that, that if they're confused, if something doesn't make sense, I want someone to say, Curtis, I still don't get it. Why? What do you mean by this specifically? What do you mean by this? Call me out. What do you What do you mean, Curtis? And, and and so, what I'm getting at, Nathan, is that our opinions. We just have one perspective. What works for us? We, or we have a a pretty good. I would say a pretty well rounded perspective, given how many coaching our sessions experience. we've done and our experiences with coaching. But again, we don't have all the answers, and yeah. we're still learning, right? But in order to get better at what we do, one of the reasons how we get better is by doing a lot of coaching sessions and calibrating and being like, okay, this works, this doesn't work, this gets results, this doesn't the, get results. This is these type of clients, this is these type of clients. So yep, I need to exactly. Them differently. And in order to come to these conclusions, you've got to have a pretty open mind. I mean, you've got to be okay with being wrong. I mean, I've, I've, had to, I've, I've literally gone back on so many things I've said in the past with champ pools and, and things like that. I've had to go back on my work because I was just wrong. And that's okay. I mean, I'm, we're going to be wrong. I'm going to be wrong on many, many things as I get better as a coach and refine my my theories. Um, and so critical thinking, where does this come into play? I feel as though, and I found myself guilty of this, when I, when I listen to someone say something confidently on YouTube, yeah. let's just say it's a Joe Rogan podcast, mm. some even some expert in a given field, just because someone is an expert, it doesn't mean they know it. It's they. It doesn't mean that what they say. It doesn't mean that they know everything about that that given thing. I mean, you can obviously say with a higher probability that they do know it, but they can still be wrong. And it's like it's like knowing that they could still be wrong is like it, it's powerful. You got to have it's, that. It's sort of like okay, so maybe I guess it's sort of let's say they're right ninety percent of the time yep. right yep 
but you you need to critically think how they got there. How do they get to that conclusion? How versus do they get just there? taking it from the go- from the as gospel. Exactly because yeah. like that that thought process needs to happen. Because the reason critical thinking is so important, Nathan, is because our clients we're not helping them. In, we don't want to help them in that just in that no, game. That doesn't make. Doesn't, we need to set them up with the toolkit to be able to improve when we are not there. Correct. Right. Yeah. Learn from vods themselves. Learn yep. from reviews themselves. Yes. To critically think about the way the game works fundamentally. And um, I want to give you an example. Okay. So this morning I had a client and he said to me, Curtis, I, you know, he, he went all the way to, we worked with him from goal four all the way to goal one. Just slow, beautiful mm-hmm. fundamentals, mm-hmm. slowly mm-hmm. climbed to goal one. Mm-hmm. Did a session this morning. He's in goal four. And I said, what, what's going on, man? Why are you in goal four? And he said, yeah, I just dropped from goal one to goal four, right? And so we got into it. And we said, what's, we had to figure out what's going on. Dandelion here. And, and Dandelion, and, and I noticed that he said, and I said, well, what are the trans men? He's a smart dude. He's a great guy. He watches the BBC. And I yeah. said, what's going on? Watching BBC means you're a good, good person. <laughs> <laughs> Directly it's correlation. You're a smart guy. If you want to drink my concept, you're a smart dude. You're a smart guy. Congratulations. Everyone watching right now. Give me a round of applause. You're intelligent. <laughs> And, um, and he said, I've been dying a lot, Curtis. Like I've been dying to ganks. Yeah. And, um, and so we look at a play where he's, he's playing Victor into Galio and he's like, he's like tunneling in on like hitting this Galio and he doesn't see the Jarvan cross over this ward. He gets collapsed on and he died. Now I said, I said to him, how did you review this out of interest? Like what, when you went into this and you looked mm, at this mistake, mm, what did you, mm. what was your learning here? Mm. And he said, oh, you know, this is just like a, like a map awareness problem. Like I wasn't looking at my mini map. Like I wasn't registering that Javan walked over the ward. Now I said to him, yes, but that's actually not the key issue here. The key issue is that you got to remember looking at the mini map and wards are only an extension of threat assessment. You only need to look at the mini map or ward because you think you can die to someone else. If the game was a 1v1, right? And there was no one else doing a 1v1, you wouldn't have a ward and you wouldn't have to look at the minimap, would you? Because all the information is in front of you. Now, what we get so caught up with is that we get so caught up with like a, like a, a, a tool, like a, like a jungle tracking or a, a ward or a, or a leaning or like a looking at the minimap. When you don't actually, when we don't actually understand why we are doing it in the first place. And I said to him, man, and I said, this is from my experience playing Victor, playing in Mobile Mages. I don't, this is why I don't teach looking at the minimap with a fucking alarm bell every 20 seconds because you, you, you're missing the point. I look at the minimap in directly co- dependent, directly dependent on how much threat I'm under that game. I will look at the minimap way, way more. If you're against a Blitzcrank vers- support versus Yumi support. If I'm versing, yeah, if I'm versing a Leona and a Javan jungle. Yeah. Right? So warding and looking at the map should only be a natural extension of threat assessment. Mm. So when you walk up here and hit this Galio, it's or- before Javan already shows the map, my mind is already ringing alarm bells and I feel scared because you're versing a Javan Gali with no flash and you're pushed up this far. But for him, he's numb. And he viewed this as a map awareness problem. And, yeah, it's not a map and awareness problem. And it's not problem. a map awareness that, problem at all. That, that's the, the same thing is um, I say in terms of... Um, people always ask me this question. How do I have good map awareness during a fight? Or like straight after a fight? And my answer is always... The good map awareness actually starts before the fight. So you should have an idea where everyone is before the fight. And the, you fight mechanics max thinking. And then like... You can quickly think, okay, well, who's here, who's not, who was sort of like close before I assess, and then you can know whether to like back off or walk a certain mm. side of the map. Mm. You know what I mean? So good map awareness happens because before, and it's like you know why you're looking at it, and you're you're looking for certain pieces of information. Yeah, like 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 for example, um, like I always say, like like look at three lanes. Like you ideally want to get getting as much information as possible, right? But at the end of the day, it's not really realistic to know what's going on in three lanes always perfectly. But it's like. Let's say it's like um, I'm walking towards top, like my early path in, and I see like the wave might be just like too big. 
Like, I, that's like one piece of information that I got. It's like, okay, I know the enemy jungle's path in towards there. I can't gank that or counter gank or whatever. I'll just die. Like, you could maybe project the dive in some situations, but let's not worry about that. So let's just say, and then now you're thinking, okay, now you stop looking at top altogether because you already assessed what's going to happen in that lane. And now you're looking at bot and mid. No, so you wouldn't need to look at top You don't anymore. look at, look at yes, top anymore. it's not important in that moment. Because I'm also going to be going straight bot and I'm not going to be top at all for the next two minutes of the game anyway. There's no nothing I can do to impact top. Who cares about? I don't. So need to notice. It. So notice how these these are. There's layers of complexity to certain concepts, and then league. Yeah, map awareness just doesn't mean anything. It, ma- yeah, it doesn't. Oh, does it. Like league is not a game where you can teach general concepts and no, climb. No. And this is my thing. And like, league is not a game of black and white. And as humans, we are we always want to package things up into a beautiful black and white statement when it's just never and this ties back to the language problem as well everything's on a scale everything's on a on a scale of zero to 100 in terms of severity or in terms of intensity or how much you want to weigh it and and i feel like understanding the underlying mindset or the underlying like why i'm directing my attention in these specific areas is more important than the tool itself but this ties directly to this game i'm in and on this champion it's just dependent my attention will be directed in many different areas according to my champion's identity and how my champion interacts in this game okay so when someone tells you something in relation to the game this is this is why i want people to call bullshit on what i'm telling them curtis why are you telling me to ward and lean here great great question i should probably and this is one thing i've my kind of learning from that that session this morning was curtis i need to to really tie things back more to the why and really make sure that I'm on the same page with the client in terms of like why and how this is going to create certain things and why I'm directing my attention in certain areas. And I've been doing, I did a recent personal review, upload kind of personal reviews on top of my MLA where I, I walked through a game, that game the, where we played together, Casio into Nocturne and how every decision in my lane was everything was related to Nocturne because Nocturne imposes a metric ton of threat onto yeah. me as Casio with no flash. Versus if it was a cane, with yeah. no form so everything will tie to mm. that game mm. specifically mm. now if i this is the, and this is my biggest nitpick in terms of the league and why it all kind of ties back to the league community is that re- and regardless of whether or not okay let's let's regardless of how much someone wants to improve and the intelligence of said person and so on and so forth regardless there is not enough attention or not enough emphasis put on the details specific to x game it's there is too many general overarching statements and people don't question it. Hmm. People aren't critical. It's of like, oh, that, that sounds pretty smart. I'm going to steal that. Yeah, that sounds yeah. smart. Yeah. That sounds really smart. The way they're saying the it. The way they're really saying it. Yeah. And it's like, oh, that kind of makes sense. Like, But they don't really think of it in terms of pragmatism. They forget the practical element of the application of mm. said information. And so, you know, one thing that I've tried to do more even when, when I learned to listen to podcasts is like, like I don't, in a weird way it sounds very i guess um negative but i just don't trust anyone like i always want to really think things because you know myself. that there's some guy that's completely opposite of yeah, what him every concept you learn yeah. in life yeah. this diet is the best do this exercise bigger is better make invest your money here there's someone else saying the complete opposite and has and many getting, many reasons for yeah. it in, in our book recently the nasim taleb he talks about how um how if someone can't explain the opposite of what of of their statement then then you should like be aware be like beware them like just be worried about them so for example if someone says um invest your money in x stock if they can't also answer why you shouldn't invest your money in x stock then that's a huge red flag someone also has to be able to say what the opposite and why you should what the what the negatives or potential things you need to be careful of of applying this knowledge are and why would there be any other alternatives to doing this is this the only way or is this the only way and then if someone says that's the only way then i would be ringing alarm bells like fuck fuck me well everyone's different i mean that's that's a bit of a red flag here you know And, and and so this whole lack of critical thinking it's flowing on to people's reviews in their games. And then I look at it sometimes and then I'm like, okay, you know, and this is what we mean, we mean in a way by asking high quality questions. If this would, if, okay, if this statement were to be true, if you tell me that um, this champion is broken, 
Well, what else does that mean? Does this mean that people... everyone instantly gets rank one playing this? Yeah. Champ? Does this mean that it, yeah, everyone gets rank one? Does it mean that um you know people didn't know how to play that champion before? I mean, I don't know. I mean, to say a bold statement like this, it would have to mean so many other things at the same time, in which that would lead to other findings, and like, it's never that simple. It's just never that simple. Nothing is ever black and white. And I think what I wanted to encourage, and the point, my main point here, is that I just want people to call bullshit on what we say as well. Like, Curtis and Nathan, what do you mean by this? How can you back up your statement of this? And what part? What experiences have you have you seen this in? And and you know, I want people to do that and and, and call us out on it because that's going to make us better coaches. And then we can also know what's confusing you guys. And then you know. You might be right. Maybe we're just wrong and that's okay. And and I think this is all stemmed from a fear of just being wrong as well. Like people aren't, they don't want to admit that they're wrong. It hurts the ego, man. And um, yeah. It hurts, man. And, and, and it's just really left me feeling, yeah, I guess aggravated. So you're frustrated that people don't critically think. Yes. Got it. And, 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 and it stemmed from and myself. And I'm frustrated at myself because I, I lack critical thinking. Mm. And just because I either respect someone or like someone mm. in a podcast, I will blindly follow. That's right. And I hate that when I do that. I hate that my default response is mm. to blindly follow that person. And Nassim Taleb talks about in his book we we're, re- we're reading called Fooled by Randomness. He came from the business world. And the, he actually spoke about how, you know, the way someone says something, like their shoulders are back. You know, there's like actual physiological response, like, things and the way humans respond that we will more likely like want to listen to that person mm. and he couldn't stand it because judgments or decisions weren't being made on the merit of their argument it were made on how confidently they said things and it really got me ringing alarm bells i'm like fuck me that this is prevalent a lot in the league community and this is something that i want to raise awareness to i'm not saying calling names here saying anything i'm just raising it as a potential issue would you say that the most fun sessions that you have are not you telling everyone what that person what to do? It's like there's a back and forth, and they will they will question question. Is there a difference between an argument? Because sometimes I get angry because I have to like argue something. Because there's sometimes there's something annoying. It's like I think it's more like invisible narratives that's invisible narratives then right stuff that i have to break is, down so 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 like, like they, they, what's an example do you have an example they can't this? get my point because their invisible narrative is blocking and i can see it clearly so then you have to you have to break down their invisible, invisible narrative, narrative before we can talk about the situation yeah does that make sense yeah I know what oh, you mean. like what's an example um, well okay so I, I know some common ones of that one nathan yeah um, i would say it, champion mental blocks against specific champions so like i i know ones where like you i get into a discussion about um is that okay common one is like when they're versing katarina and then like or Z or something and then i can clearly pinpoint all right here you you did this and now you're chunked and like because of this and you know they can roam but then but then like their default response is to not really take responsibility for that mistake because they're overemphasizing the strengths of that champion got it so first we're gonna like really identify the fact that you've got a mental block versus this champ yeah. And this is like why. Then we can get to like how to like deal with the champ. Like we we can't talk about how to deal with the champ until we've identified that like why you've got a mental block with the champ. Yeah, I mean that's just one off the top of my head. Yeah, so I would, I would say the most common one again is like my champion is bad into this champion, so I can never fight or whatever. Yeah, the never, the general, yeah, the, the, the ver- what that we would call them. We call them uh, absolutes. Absolutes. The absolute statements. You want to avoid the absolute statements. The- I never do this. I never get blue. That one, oh shit, yeah. What the, do they the, say? I, they I, I just never from... get blue. My jungles never give me blue. And then I look at their vod, and they the blues up the jungles on the, and they just just do nothing. They just <laughs> say mid. They don't walk to it. They don't ask for it. They do nothing. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I said, I guarantee That's if you annoying. walk over it and ping it, yeah, and and I want, the, they and will give it. What happened was the argument. Then they'll be like, you'll be like, they're not gonna give it because in this game, in this game, this they happened, didn't. This but that's like one percent. <laughs> yeah. It's like. 90% yeah, of the time yeah. they will yeah. there's that one time they won't yeah. or the other one my team always gets caught every time I go in the side lane there you go and people are allergic to side lane because yeah. they say I just can't ever side lane yeah. but you just got to get more granular get more yeah because like, like sometimes you might need to come and help your team because yeah. they have a heavy engage but if you're against no engage the percentage of side this lane working is just is critical good. thinking at the end of the day isn't yeah. it it's just like really understanding what's going on here what is going on here I mean, this is a skill set that you're going to have to develop regardless 
of your industry or whatever the hell you do. You're going to create a habit of being a critical thinker. Why does this work? Why does it not work? What do I, if this were to be true, what else does that mean? Yeah. And again, it might, a lot of it might be right. Like, yeah, that just, I, hey, Nathan, we've got to say this quickly. Oh no. This is the last thing. Oh, when, no. and, and you see this all the time with like, get rich quick schemes, right? Yeah. It's like, okay guys, we have this passive income generating thing that's going to generate you $2,000 a month. You know, why the fuck would this guy be selling that in the first place if he had this, he had this, he solved the market? That's right, yeah. Why does he need to Why sell Why does he need you? to sell a product if he's got the market on, he knows how to work or like if he has all this money? Why yeah. does he have to sell an NFT, you know, and teach you how to how to build an NFT if he could do that and make millions of dollars? It just, like if you really just break it down, it doesn't make any sense. No, yeah, that's critically thinking about, just critically, you're, you're questioning the motive of that person selling that. questioning the motives. That. Yeah. If you were so good at getting to, if you know how to get to Challenger, why are you still five seasons diamond, dude? Yeah, yeah. What's give, what? Give me what's going on? Man? You just don't have the hands, like you don't have the micro. What's going on here, man? Yeah, it's too hard. Yeah. Well, how am I gonna do it? Yeah. You gotta question it, dude. You gotta question it. Hopefully something's ticking, something's going over, something's going on here. What was my point before you sorry, interrupted me? I had, to, I had to call bullshit there. What's, what's, oh, what was my point? I'm so sorry, What were we getting at, dude? I think it was actually a good point. Oh, was, I, ruined, I just ruined the podcast. It's, I don't think it's going to come back to me. Oh. I, I, you know, it's so like... We're talking about... Um, you know, so we'll go, what was the flight? We're going from um, critical thinking... No, it was something you had to do with the specific league situation. Oh, the champion mental blocks, the side laning, the not knowing how to split push, went to group, went to split, um, not getting blue buffs, um, champion blocks. It's completely... Oh, God damn You know, sometimes it's like on the cusp, this is just... It's, it's gone. Oh. Like... Like, like, part of me feels like this is what it feels like to have dementia or something. <laughs> like, it's just not, it's gone. It's completely it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. Like, it's not even, I swear to God, it's not even going to come back. Yeah. The next yeah. Rest of the podcast. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, I, and I, 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 I'm first to admit, I'm not a master of it. And it's something I'm still trying to develop. And I just want to be super clear. You know, I'm trying to get better at this. And this is what I want. And I want to do it. And then, so then people working with me can also, it's like a back and forth. I'm critically asking them good quality questions. They're asking me good quality questions. And then we both grow together. Here's a critical thing that I've done of my mm -hmm. coaching recently. I guess, I don't know if this is critical thinking or criticizing or this is a question I had, right? Okay. Is my focus, because obviously we're sort of known for like ending reviews early and like, mm. you know, because it influences the game. Mm. Is my review style or my coaching style, em I emphasize so much like playing like high percentage and safe to get yourself a lead that's getting them leads that they no longer have to like play mechanically well because they're so far ahead that it actually will cap them out because they're, they're not playing situations that are, they need to like make a difference in terms of the fighting. Yeah, this is an incredibly complex scenario. What do yeah, you I think? Know, I know exactly what you mean. Because yeah, because oh. so th this is my, this is this is happening in my gameplay, right? Oh no! Because I'm learning like Java and Elise and stuff like that, right? There's some games where like a hundred, like you know, I, I do my coaching, cre and I know it works because yep. I do it like yep. perfect flawless game, yep. like, no mistakes, right? But then I'm thinking, you know, but then I'm like in these games, like I'm still ahead. I still like fuck up the fight, but I'm so far ahead it doesn't matter, right? Because mm. I've done all the fundamentals, that sort mm. of stuff, perfect. Mm. And then I'm thinking, wait, and then like the games that like are close, I'm like losing low skirmishes because I don't have a big enough lead that I rely on. I and rely on having a lead. And you don't have the skirmishing to ability do that. To win the games that are close. Okay. Like I'm really relying. If you look at my games, I mean, people call me in solo. I'm a coin flip. They're just, I'm just coin flip because I'm either going to play. But you play the most disciplined way, but you're still coin flip, which yeah. is interesting. Yeah, it's interesting, it's isn't it? It's very interesting. Okay, I want to, before we go on from this, I want to use an analogy. So just so we're on the same page, just so I get what you mean. Yeah. So in a way, because we you've coached in a particular way, so I'm gonna I'm gonna view this the analogy of like new technology. Yeah. So you've you've created Facebook here. Yeah. And this idea, it's like it could it's like revolutionizing the way we we connect with the world now, right? Yeah. So then the more you interact with this like new technology, Facebook, you're using it, you're using it, you're using it, you're no, you're now going into uncharted territory. 
whereby we don't know the there's side like effects. Problems. There's other yeah. problems. Like you're solving one, one problem, problem, but yeah. then there's other problems created because you've gone down this like new route. Mm. So with Facebook, it's like, well, now there's like social anxiety. People don't know how to interact anymore. There's like targeted ads. It's like all this crap, all these other problems that you've got to deal with as a result of- They popped up years later. Popped up years later as a result of mm. getting immediate results another way. Mm. Is that what? And we on the same page? Is that yep, exactly, that's exactly what you mean? right? Yeah. Okay. So, I think I've actually ran into this with Milk Puddle, Zed Player, and we worked with him to like really bring him back consistent early games in gold. Like he's just dominating his opponent, and then mm. he heads into every mid game being six and zero. Mm. But then he can't end the game being six and zero because you're so fed. You're gonna give a shutdown at some point. So you're actually making the game harder for yourself because he's so he's so reliable so with his early lane. He's yeah. so good his early lane, and we've owned him on his early lane. Yeah. So like you actually made the game versus being closer. He doesn't have that. If, if he's goal not shut that down. good, he doesn't have that big shot down, and then he can still kind of make like, mistakes in the mid game. Wrap away that fire, and it would be okay. Yeah. So I'm actually making the climb harder <laughs> for him by making his landing really and good. And teaching great fundamentals, that sort of stuff. Yeah, because yeah. it's it's, an, it's a weird way of climbing league. I mean, this is unheard of. Like, you don't... Back in the day, yeah, we cause, didn't cause climb if, like if that. Yeah, because if you think about it, the, like, because then I was thinking, what's the general journey for a player? They're making all these mistakes. and they're, But they're, they're but, compensating by learning another skill. Yeah, or like they, they're able to like pull through, like winning the game through like a fire, certain fire. But you're creating a specific game state as well aren't you by playing the way you play that's very favorable yeah but it's not always possible well i've i have seen i i know exactly what you mean i would i've given another another example for this sometimes and this is actually kind of the way i've evolved my coaching okay um and this is something you might want to experiment with it could be interesting Mm. so in, in in mid and jungle the way we teach we teach fundamentals right we teach like concepts or certain things. Like like a beautiful game or beautiful game with that champion. Well, like a challenger bring... level stuff. Also, right? so, okay, let's actually take a step back again. Mm. Let's go back to why I believe high, being high elo is so important for being a good coach. Okay. Yeah. Let's start with there. Okay. League is a game. Uh, the reason why we, we've had, I think, pretty decent success with coaching is because all we've done is we've gone into solo queue and known and, and drawn off our past experience what works for us and then distilled all of the things that have worked for us, broken it down into fundamentals in a way. So rather than like looking at like some challenger player and trying like just to exactly copy, we're like, we've actually gone from like one whole piece and like pulled it apart into five pieces. So like you build up all these five Lego pieces and then you create this. But that's what we've done, right? I mean, in a way, we've actually looked at our own gameplay and then broken it down, like reverse engineered how we got to that. How do you get that gameplay, right? Yep. So then you can isolate specific areas and you can build upon the skill set in a much more regimented way, essentially, right? Now, what I've noticed is that... Um, in a way that we can explain it as and well. In a way that we can explain because it. Because it's very difficult to... Exp- we found when we first started coaching that... You can't just explain... It was very hard to, to explain what was going on. And yeah, you can't. If you don't, if you can't break it down into concepts, it's brutal because you're just looking at something that doesn't make sense. Yeah. So in order to t- bridge that gap, we've had to break it down, right? But then what you do when we teach is that you teach the concepts and then you build it up to what it was. You, so what, you, what we're actually doing is we're tearing it down, getting these like tools, let's call them tools. Let's yeah. get five tools. And then now you got to you got to put all these tools together again to create the whole. That's basically what we're doing, That's what right? We're doing, yeah. So some are easier than other. Like again, I always bring it back to my Erlef guide, which is my most popular video on my Soul yep. Two channel. That was a, that wasn't even I would say that was like a step by step program to like give you a good game state that you can win the game. Right. I don't know if if the you said it was like a the five parts. Mm. Like that's like five equal parts. I'm thinking like one step one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, same that, thing. That's pretty really unique thing. It was that unique. unique but that's a unique game plan. I would yeah, say. Yeah, because you can do it every game. Yeah, but let's 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 think more holistically about like like a mid like mid and jungle fundamentals in okay. a way. Yeah, that, like so that apply no matter every champ. They're like adaptable. You can like you adapt them. In yeah, situations. you adapt them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. You wouldn't apply them blindly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so you got these five tools, right? But what I've noticed is that like for some people. They, they understand intuitively how these tools work together to create a complete, na- like, a, like a, a, a coherent narrative. Like they get 
how like the warding and the leaning and the CSing and it all just fits and it works in this situation to create this output. Like you got all the inputs, boom, 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 I get an output. But then there's people that don't. And and, and, and th that's my fault, right? I probably haven't explained it for them. Like I haven't figured out an analogy to explain it for them. But then they've got all, they, they, they kind of work on all these skills, but it doesn't get them results because they're, they're looking at the game to literally, like as like I apply X tool here, Y tool here. Yeah. And then- I always struggle with those. That's like the rigid mindset. The rigid mindset. I struggle that with like the really like the programmers, the, the people that do programming because that, yeah. that mindset is type it, output. Right. Input, output, output input, yeah. output. And, and, and so what I'm getting at here, Nathan, and the way I frame this in my mind is this. So this, this is going to sound so ridiculous. Mm. Let's imagine that you've got five differing color Lego blocks. Okay. Imagine it. And, and imagine that these, these, these Lego blocks are now lying on the floor in front of you, right next to each other. And they're different colors. You've got a red block, a blue block. They're all the same size, different colors though. Red, blue, yellow, green, whatever. Now, these all represent each of those individual tools, okay? Those fundamentals. If you were to simply kind of try and stack them on top of each other, you will get like a very bland looking thing that doesn't make any sense. But the way I view league and now coaching is that you've got these five, I imagine like I'm in Harry Potter world or some shit, and there's like this magical like dust floating around and they, these all like float up into the air and then they like, they, they, you need this extra like create, like, I don't even know how to like do Like the snake oil. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> like you could like kill the snake and get its blood into like a, <laughs> you know, it's like a quest or something, you know? Well, you need some then, like extra little. It's like a potion. Well, you need a glue. I, I, to think, like, I think a potion's better. Yeah. Yeah. A potion, better? I guess. But, but I'm, I'm viewing specifically these Lego blocks. You need something to join them all together. To glue them together. Yeah. There's another like Got mystical it. element there that yeah. is combining it all together to complete a co uh, coherent narrative. And until you've got that, I understand how it all joins together. You won't get any results. And I think what's happened, Nathan, you know, tying it back to your initial problem is that, you know, you're, you're viewing the game very literally. It's very logical. Yeah. Very logical. But you haven't tied it to like reference points and you haven't tied it to like the, the specific situations enough. And I think you've thought about it too logically. And I've made this mistake as well with people as got well. It. And it's yeah. and it's got them into a hole. Yeah. And so this is why now I push that whole point of like, this is why we're doing it. And this is how we're going to use these tools. Like the map awareness thing. It's not about how many times you look at the map. It's about this. That's an extension of threat assessment, you know, understanding why that's occurring. And then like how this all ties into a beautiful piece, you know? So... Um, and I think the only way to get out of this is that you really got to, you got to understand why, like, what are you trying to create? Like why, what game state are you trying to create? What are you trying to do by doing all this shit? Like when you play your games, Nathan, you're playing this Jarvan, you're playing what you call you perfectly, whatever perfect League of Legends is. There's no such thing as perfect League of Legends. That's just like your interpretation of how to win the game with that champion. Like you, that's the first thing you got to wrestle with. Mm. Like that's just your... I, I don't think there is just one way to play Jarvan in like that game state. That'd just be one, right? I mean, M4A1, the player in Oris breaks that narrative every single time. There's mm. many ways to win a game of League of Legends mm. that isn't step-by-step -step beautiful League of Legends, is there? So what I'm getting at, Nathan, is that like, you got to realize that this is just one way and be very clear about like why that's what you're trying to do. And then I feel as though the skirmishing and all these other elements will kind of fall naturally into place. They should. What I'm afraid of is that they're not going to. Because again, I emphasize that, again, not perfect, but like. Okay, so so to reframe it then a different way, then you've got, okay, stepping back from all this crap, then it's like, okay, your way of playing literally doesn't improve upon a specific skill or very, very rarely. So everything else rises and you've got this on one little skill set. That's, that's not. That's yeah. not. So I imagine like a like a I imagine like a like a skill tree in WoW or some shit. Mm. And you've got like all these skill trees, and like they're all leveling up as you grow. But you've ignored this one, and this one's yeah. just like there, and yeah. it's, you've only got like one or two abilities. There, well, in there. there is some clients that I have. Well, that's what I found with 
Philip, that really gold, like rigid, he's the programmer guy, right? He's like my best example, right? Mm. And um, <laughs> there's literally a meme, right, in our Discord, because we have like the practice dojo, right? And we like stream, like you tune into Philip's stream, 7 and 0 every game. Mm. Re- like perfect part. Here's like challenger level, just perfect so stuff. Where, so what goes wrong? Execution. Literally, I'm not even emphasizing, I'm not even exaggerating, it's pure execution. Some fight, bam. You know, dies once here. So you're saying that if he were to not play the way you were, right, and be more messy... Well, like- that, that's the thing. It's... Yeah, I mean, it's hard because he's doing... Like, it's great, perfect stuff. So then the question you should ask then is, was this even avoidable anyway? Like, was he going to struggle with this regardless of your program or not? Yeah, I would say he struggled Like, he probably was, yeah, by the sounds of true. things, like, he was probably going to struggle with that yeah. or cross that... Like, the way I view it in many ways is, like... They were going to cross this bridge at some point anyway. The problem might look a little bit exacerbated now, but it's you're probably going to have this problem regardless. Yeah. And we are working on it. And he's getting results. It's like almost platinum now. So, I mean, I mean that's just the problem of the league, it's right? You can't one. isolate things. Yeah, you can't isolate things. It's just because because then it's like I'm reviewing like a skirmish and then I'm like, and it's like, you know, it was end of review like five minutes ago. It's like, well, you're just not in a good, like, let's say you're, you're Eve and you have Eva and you have like no items, dude. And you're like going for a fight. Mm. You just don't have the damage to be effective in this fight. Well, uh, again, Do you have to learn how to play the fight from behind or uh, is that something yeah. to focus on? So I think Nathan then, like I think, and, and this is what I kind of said to Milk, but it was like simply understanding why he's in that situation and what he's struggling, struggling with is sometimes enough. You know, sometimes all a client needs is to know why they're losing like as long as I know why, even if it's shit, it's like that's true. Then it's, like, it's, it's okay. Really it's part of the process. It's, really it's like yeah, yeah. It's Philip's like, fine with it. We're having yeah. we're all having fun. We're all great. It's like he's like, just like, focusing that's what on I feel. The and with Milpa, it was the same thing. It's like well, that's a good problem to have. Yeah, you know, I would much rather that problem than like a whole mumble jumble of like seventeen <laughs> problems. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's you know, true. so either yeah. way, I mean, there's a yeah, problem. It's like when people went first joined Soul too. It's like. The first thing is the jungle tracking. They just don't do it. And it's like, okay, well, that's just end of review. This is the step one. And it's like, yeah. I mean, that's, you gotta, that's, that's, that's a good session in my eyes. Am I wrong in saying that? Like, yeah. Am I going to go over 17 mistakes? Like, that's actually step one. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I mean, I had one this morning, same thing, new guy to, to MLA, and he just didn't know how to CS properly. Yeah. It's like, regardless of what's happening, you just got to CS. We got to identify why you're missing CS. It's because okay. he's auto into not thinking about which one's getting targeted and auto attacking too much. Yeah. Let's just address this first. Yeah. And then move on from there. Um, but I think, yeah, I think Nathan, you might be just be over exaggerating the issue. Potentially, like I with milk. Potentially, it's like yeah. with milk puddle. It's like, well, you know, screw it. It's like, I mean, that's a good problem to have. I would rather have that problem than, and we can address that. You're just going to be climbing way faster than everyone else anyway. Yeah. And I guess like now it's like, well, this is where the question came from. Cause in my gameplay, I'm just mixed executing just basic stuff. Right. Um, I mean, it's still a good problem to have, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's a good problem to have. Yeah, I mean, I'm still very confident. Like, would you rather, you know, have unreliable early games with, like, maybe a little bit better skirmishing because you're in more skirmishes? Or would you rather, yeah. you know, getting great force early games and then maybe missing it once and losing the game? Like, I would rather the second. Yeah, you're right. Because you, you're right. then at least you understand the context of the, the problem. Yeah. And, and then at least it'd be a reliable problem, right? It's like... I'm assuming your problem would basically be the same every time. Yeah, it's literally the same every time. I had barely even reviewed my games recently because I literally know, you just know exactly, exactly. Yeah. Can you can you get specific and tell me here? I would love to just do a bit of a psychoanalysis. Here, so. I mean, it's hard without seeing the games in front of us. I know, but just like a problem. You remember one problem? Let's say yes. One mistake that lost you a game. Um. Is it a skirmish related one? Are they all skirmish related or are they like more dives or what What are they? One situation was I, oh, well, I simply like I ganked mid. Yeah. Um, level three, you know, they do good old blue. It's like you do blue grunt wolves yep. and you know, I, they, you hate I that I game. don't die that one anymore. You don't die that one. one. Yeah, yep. that's, a, that's an infamous one. It's very common. Oh, when and did then, that come about by the way? Is that like a new thing? Like, I mean, it's like a month old, right? No, it's, because I swear no one used to do that, at least in O's. Yeah, I'd say now it's more general. Like the last two months, it's I'd like... say it's been all season, even last season really? as well, nice. yeah. Okay. Um, anyway. So I did that, and then I'm against a Rumble Jungle, and then... Um, so what are you playing? I'm playing Elise, okay. Rumble Jungle, and then he kills me on my red buff, because he knew where I was going. And in my mind, I was like, he should... He, he would just commit to the full clear, because he's playing Rumble. Okay. You know, he's probably got two points Q, he doesn't have his E yet. 
You know what I mean? Like I thought the percentage chance of him going there, like I had time to get the buff. And then he kills me and all my bot sides up insta GG. Okay. Right? Because I'm, I'm Elise. I've just died on my thing. He, and he's a rumble. Yeah, he'd be so far ahead of you. It, it, and then he gets, takes my raptors and everything. And I'm well, fucked. it's not over because, I mean, if Sybil's in that situation, he's going to find a way to win. Yeah, probably. But like, yeah. I like mean, I'm in a really rough in a bad position. Spot, yeah. yeah. Like I'm not confused. I'm not scratching my head while I'm losing that okay. game. You know what I mean? So, okay. So how do you walk away from that one then? Um... No matter what jungler I'm versed in, if I show mid and then I walk into my jungle, I'm obviously like, I need to just, I just need to like wait there a little bit and just like even camp a brush and like, I could switch that situation so quickly. So is this, so these, these are all like very specific. You just have specific example of specific problem after specific problem. After yeah. Specific problem. There's no real trend. There's no trend at all. Yeah. Or like trend in terms of like E usage, I guess with Elise. Because um, I just don't believe there's a trend. Like, I mean, I don't believe that there isn't a trend. trend. I just don't believe that. Because yeah, no, there there would there is. Because even in mine, that don't that look my mistakes on my main, they don't look connected, but they are. Okay, well, I'd say in general, I tether in, and my 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 movement mm -hmm. is really sloppy. Okay. So like, I was talking to Charlie about this yesterday. Like, he won't watch my game. I just run into a fire, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, especially Zin's out. Mm. And then I you once, don't just hold and just like back well, up. Well, like, you know, bit. it's like you like those just yeah, micro You just got to wait like a little bit. Yeah. yeah 0 0.5 seconds or whatever. Well, then like, even like I go in in the fight and then like I hit like the, the one cue, the two cues, and then like I walk back and then I go walk back yeah, in, yeah, like yeah. that sort of stuff. Yeah. But, but what I've been doing is just like walk in, one, two, Q twos, they flash, and then I'm like. But that's not a mystery as to why that's happening, though. That's because it's not something you're actively trying to think about. Like, you're not. You're not thinking about that. That's not muscle memory for you. You've never really done that. Yeah, because of the champs I play. Yeah, like, you've never done that. Like that. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. So I would say that that's something you would have to just have to focus on. Yeah, that's right. I'm not, again, I'm not confused. Yeah. I'm knowing exactly why I'm losing games. Yeah, but I'm talking more... That's a specific problem that... I, I so think is that, that a problem, trend or not? I feel like that problem is completely different to the other problem. Yeah, that is correct. Those are two different problems. That's yeah. they're, they're different problems. Yes. Yeah. But that skirmishing thing is important because that will change. That would impact all skirmishes, all skirmish across all champions. Yeah, yeah. That's like a mindset. That's more of like a mindset of like holding abilities and like just being a little bit more intentional. But like, like the reason Nathan, I th I think there's trends is because at least for me, the mistakes themselves won't look like they're connected. But the reason why you made those mistakes are so. For example, with me, like I, I found out that I like I think it was not my last, my not my last game I played, but the three block before that. I four block. I um like I was just rushing all these plays. Like like the entire three block. I was just rushing plays. Yeah. Like just I, I was not thinking of like where the bot lane was and where my like what was happening on that before committing to a play. Like I would I was only considering the mid jungle two v two. I wasn't thinking about what's happening in sides before like committing to a play. And so like like some the way this would manifest sometimes would be like I would. Um, see the enemy support roaming and then instantly just try to kill them because I, I see my jungler's here. I'm like, oh, I have first move. We can just go. But then their jungler's there and then like they have barrier and it's just like a shit show. <laughs> it's like, but like the trend was across all these mistakes is that I wasn't thinking before acting. Got I was it. just That's going. The trend, yeah, the trend was that I wasn't looking at my bot lane, looking at my top lane and calibrating before just going in for a big dick play. Yeah. And the way that manifested was very different throughout those three games, but the underlying problem was existing all three of them. Yeah. So that, that's what I would urge you to reflect on. Like, where is it coming from? What, where is that issue stemming from? Because mm. I just don't believe that a person, a player of your caliber would be making mistakes that are completely, like, independent. Like, for example, 610 in EU, his problems all look different, but they're the same underlying issue. Like, he just, he has, like, those attentional blinks and then just dies randomly. Like, mm. makes some really stupid mistake. Mm. Whether it's, like... He'll just walk under the tower and hit the tower when the jungle is missing mm. or base is in a bad spot or whatever it might be. It's just some basic error, but it's not because he doesn't know the concept. It's just an intentional blink. Yeah, it's just... It's so, yeah, you got to figure out what it is, man. Yep. Keep having a crack. But anyway, before we head into mailbag, yeah, um, was there anything else you wanted to add on to the critical thinking thing? No, it's good. It's good. I think critical thinking, we've got to think about it more. Make it a habit, I guess. Is yeah, like make the, it a habit. I mean, we, the learning objective. we got to make it a habit. How about a really actionable thing, right? Let's say your mum or girlfriend asks you 
says, we should have this for dinner tonight. Critically think whether that is the best thing for you. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just talking. I actually ass. think about that a lot. Really? You critically think? Yeah, because I think about how much time I have this day comparatively to what, how much time I'll have that day yeah. and how long that meal will cook, take to cook. Really? Yeah, all the time. Is that critical thing or is that, is that planning? Critical? I think that's just like planning. That's just planning? It? Yeah. Critical thing is like question. It's like that's yeah, more like, like let, let's say if is that more thinking why am I even eating this meal? Yeah, let, like let, let's say if your mum was to say take vitamin D pills, mm. they're the best, right? And then you'll like be like okay, well I want to go research like is that actually you know or what's this specific one that she's recommending? Yeah, like why? Like, why? What, what are like, some bad reviews of it? What's the downside? Yeah, and how much does it cost? And all these other things. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, that's a gr- that's a great one. I think vitamin- if something is if something sounds too good to be true, it likely is. Likely is. If is vitamin D pills the one that helps? Is that sun stuff? Is that vitamin C? What's vitamin C? No, that's vitamin D, isn't it? Vitamin E D. You know how you say like you know gamers are like vitamin mm. D deficient because we don't mm. go outside. Yeah, we just have these natural artificial lights. We're just blinding my retinas right now. Um, yeah, I don't know. I we're not very good. I have vitamin aspects. C tablets though. So. Vitamin C is from like oranges and mandarins, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. This is the fruit. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's vitamin D is the sun. But that advice from my mum would probably be spot on. Was that, with, is that the advice that you had? <laughs> no, no. It's, I think my sister actually gave uh, me that advice. Yeah. <laughs> like fish oil tablets or something. I think they're good for Yeah, you, I've heard they're good. I don't really know the science behind <laughs> yeah. it. But sometimes, look, sometimes you, if you don't have an opinion on it, and sometimes like... It's like, just, just do it, dude. Like, yeah. sometimes I'll just do it to test it. That's you know? not critical thinking. No, but sometimes you just don't have a, you don't have that That's choice. True. It's yeah. like, if, my, if I go to the doctor yeah. and my doctor tells me to take these antibiotics for my like tonsillitis, well, given they're a doctor and they've probably done this for a very long time. And I mean, I could theoretically, theoretically go home and like do some research, do some research, but you know, depending on the scenarios, you can't critical think every that's right. It's probably even, you know. Right, so let's say the example for a league. Then it's you're, just common sense. You're right? talking like an iron player, critically thinking like a challenger build. Is that the, is that the same thing? Yeah, it's kind of the same thing. Just like you just don't. So when you say like you want your clients to critical think, you like. The... Well, it's more about if it's more about if something doesn't because unless it makes complete. You got to you got to figure sense. it out. You got to uh, yeah. I'd say regards. I'd say maybe it is good for an iron player to critically think the build. Because they're, they're going through the... It will be right or like much better than what they do. Well, it's probably. not because they have an opinion on what the build should be. be. It's, it's more about like what, how they came to that that's conclusion. That's right, how they came to that conclusion. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. But so it's, it's, not like, it's not like an iron player. It's like, well, well this is my opinion and how it's <laughs> yeah. worse in my games. It's like, you know, it's all like yeah, that. Yeah. It's more like, okay, what, how did you... Why is that the best build? You yeah. Know? That's, that's, a, that's a good... You know, going down that rabbit hole Yeah, is, I guess, fine. Yeah. Yeah, well, what the iron player would need to do... He might have his build that he thinks works, but he needs to understand and why that. What about this build good. doesn't work? What yeah. am I missing here? Yeah, what am I missing? That's right. That's what the critical. That's a good. Aspect. That's a good quality question. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it requires a little bit of common sense, right? Yeah. All right, we is that, is that if we go? Lovely. All right, here we go, Nathan's mailbag. I've done it. That's actually in the jingle, so All right. that's wrong. It's meant to be. Away we go! Welcome back for Nathan's Mailbag. Jingle, jingle, jingle song. All right, first question here comes from David. Title of this email is Demoted After, sorry, Demotivated After Peaking. Hello, Nathan and Curtis. Love the podcast and listen every time I'm at work. My name is Lantern. Well, I've just called him David. Lantern. And I'm a support main. Mostly Thresh. That has been plat for three seasons until this season where I peaked at Masters 50 LP on the NA server. As I took climbing way more seriously this year. I recently dropped all the way down to D10 LP and have lost all motivation to even try to get back as my initial goal was to end the season Masters. I keep telling myself things like Thresh was broken this season anyway. Support is such an easy Elo inflated role. And I truly do believe that my accomplishment of even reaching Masters feels unearned. I work a full-time job, so I don't have much time to play league daily, but it really does demotivate me when I come home from a long day of work, being excited to grind some League of Legends and dream of reaching Masters again, and then go on a massive losing streak. How can I keep my head up in situations like this where I feel unmotivated and stop disregarding my accomplishments. So we got 
Lanson here. He plat three, three seasons. This season, Masters 50 LP, then drops down to D Diamond 1, well, 0 LP. It's funny funny you bring this one up because at the moment in the MLA, there's a lot of people that are de- like low motivation. Yeah. And it's fine. Motivation comes and goes. You can't rely on can't motivation. Rely on, yeah. You just don't rely on it. It's people, you know, they get all upset that they've motivated sometimes and not motivated another it's, it's easy to be motivated this is the other thing as well it's easy to be motivated when everything's going well for you're on a win streak or something right yeah but i've actually got people right now that have reached their highest peaks and they're still unmotivated because mm-hmm. they're just they, they're not connected with their goal and they just maybe they're burnt out there's many reasons why you can be unmotivated you could be playing too much you've, you've actually reached the goal that you've actually you wanted to get <sighs> There are many reasons. So, look, don't beat yourself up too much. At the end of the day, what I would say is um, being unmotivated for a specific time, like during a certain period of time is very normal. Mm. And that's why I tell people to play breaks all the time. Mm. I tell people in the MLA, take a two-week break. Mm. Come back in two weeks. Yeah. Even come back. You know, people who even left the MLA and they said, well, I'm going to come back next season. Mm. They'll come a few months later. Mm. If you, if people want to do that, they can do that. Mm. Um you know, I'm not there to tell you you got to play rank three box every day, um, schedule every day, perfect. You know, no, sometimes that's just not what you want. That's not what you find enjoyable. You got to find what is enjoyable. So there's that. Then there's the aspect of coming back. Um, okay, well, a few things. We need to address the negative self-talk. The, f- the first one that I actually want to address is um, he feels like, so he's D10 LP and then he feels like, you know, he didn't, Earn it to get to Master what, 50 LP. What does that even mean? Um, I would say, well, that specifically is that because the season's like, you know, we're about a month away of ending he, and he's probably been in Diamond 1 0 LP for a long time. He's like just bouncing, like, you know, maybe gets a 50 LP or mm. something like that. You know, it's like when sometimes the the it, the goal feels so important, it feels so overwhelming to get back to Master 50 LP that he just needs to like bring it, bring it back to the small steps. Right. like, you know, I'm just going to play my three box today. If I get to D1 20 LP, that's great, you know? But he would view that as not great because he had this expectation of where he was. And this is what my trap was for his seasons, right? Because I was challenger in season three, rank two. I always had that my climb or my progress in rank didn't mean anything in comparison to what I was able to do in the past. Even though it's a different game, I'm a different player and different, you know, different, different meta, game, everything. Different, different meta, everything, right? So... Yeah, like I feel like you know sometimes you get let's let's, let's say for example, um, like I feel like what demotes a lot of people from going to the gym is that he sees people with the same physiques and they get overwhelmed. It's like, well, fuck, like there's no way I'm going to achieve that in like one month of trying in the gym. But you got to take those step that step if you're ever even going to get close to that, right? Or even I think something that helps me is you're only as good as your last block. You know, just because you were mastered for me, like I was one eleven hundred LP. I dropped down to like 800. That's 1100 LP Curtis is Fairyland at this point. That's, it's just like, yeah. what? now I'm on the steady climb and it's yep. like, well, I'm just taking it one block at a time. Yep. Improving on specific things. Making sure you're playing high intensity. Yep, high intensity. And th- that's it. And I know what champions I'm playing. I know what I'm trying to improve upon. Whether it gets me back to 1100 or not, that doesn't matter. I mean, I can only try my best. And so I think that he's likely detached completely from improving. It's results. It's just results, yeah. results, results. Yeah, he's, he's lost his way in terms of what he's actually, like, what is, what is, rather than asking himself the question, how do I get back to master? It's like, well, what does a grand master or a challenger thresh behavior look like? And how can I maybe hone in on one of those aspects and like get to that? Like, he's also set his goal at kind of like low in a way. It's like when you, when you tunnel in on just getting to master, master here, yeah, it's, it's just like not, not even mindset. Yeah. It's like, it can sometimes be a little bit, brutal because um, like other than that again like i'm 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 i'd say more motivated i'm more motivated now at 150 lp to learn this new play style and like you know play you know perfectly and do these mechanical things yeah. than i was when i was at like 600 lp you know because you know when i when i was stuck at 600 lp because that was when challenges started increasing and then i was just trying to latch onto challenger and mm. first i lost improvement mindset all gone and mm. i had lost four months of the season to that gone mm. disappeared yeah mm. so um it it just doesn't work for you you've got to just be like you know and we said we just got to bring it back process. to specifics and yeah i'd say it's bringing it back to specifics and have like like think of being a challenger thresh like in, look at the challenger korean threshes that's like 
see what's capable with the champion. That's so exciting because you know the thing yeah. that got me excited about Elise? Someone linked me this montage of this Elise player doing like these insanity things with the champion. I didn't even think it was possible. And that just gave me so much excitement to play the champion. I was like, this is champ mastery. This is so awesome to be, would be able to get to this stage. What makes League fun, it's, it's the expression of your skill. It's not even really the rank. It's like, it's playing at a high level that makes League fun. Yeah. Like when you think of those games, you absolutely pop in. Like you feel great. Mm. Like that's, that's what really is exciting. Yeah, it's, it's like the LP after, yeah, it's like a little dopamine hit, but that's not actually where you get the fun. It's that game. It's, it's playing that game. That, it's playing, playing that the game. game. Playing that game. Not sitting there just looking at the leaderboard, just like scrolling through, you know? It's like you can compare with like the leaderboard thing or you can compare with your friends or whatever. Um, so yeah, get specific. What does is, what is a challenger level thresher landing look like? What do their hooks look like? What do their Ws look like? What does their positioning and fights look like? What, I'll what tell, do their roams look like? What I would tell David is, David, I want you to start a fresh YouTube channel. I want you to review 10 Korean Challenger Thresh VODs and upload them and then report back to me. No, you, They're not going to be no purpose. No one's going to see them because you have zero subscribers. But that'll be like a cool exercise, I think. Just like very actionable. 10 VODs, show me what you think, see here. And then like if I was his coach, we'll be like, well, let's go over it, what things you yep. missed and stuff like that, you know? That'll be exciting. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of great YouTube channels about... They actually have, like, POV of, like, streams. That they collect sad. all the streams and stuff. Have yeah. you seen those channels? Yeah, I, I did that a lot when I was learning Fizz with Mango yeah. Fish. Yeah. yeah. Bayfang as well. That's great advice. All right. Uh, next question here is from Johnny. Tyler's email is building ranked stamina. Hello, BBC. The question I have for you guys today is how to improve one's rank stamina. For most of this season, I've been sticking to three blocks, as you guys mentioned. What I've found is that I rarely have the mental capacity to play more than three high-intensity games a day. If I try to do two blocks, the second one always ends up being bad. I get tilted more easily and just play with less focus. Next season, I want to be able to grind a lot more. I see a lot of pro high level players up to play 10 games per session, even maintaining focus throughout most of it. My goal is to really get to this point so I can improve and climb even more next year. I want to be able to do six to nine games a day with high intensity. How can I increase my rank stamina? This is, I think we've answered this before, but this is a common question. Well, I would start with, um, I would start with the schedule routine. Mm. I mean, for me, like if I don't get eight hours, I'm no way doing two blocks in yeah. a million years. Yeah. So six like games. I'm done after three games. Like I can barely do three games. I could probably do two, three. I'm, 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 my third game is low intensity with mm. like today. I didn't get eight hours. I think I like probably got like seven. Mm. There's no way I could do more than three games. I'd be done. I'd be I'd even stretched to play three. And thinking about your, again your schedule versus a pro player schedule playing ten games. That's all they do all day. But you coach intensively. You do four hours of coach intensively before you even play solo queue. Yeah. And you've been up for six seven hours. Yeah. You know. So, well, like, so yeah. it turns on your schedule. Right? It turns on your schedule. So I would say. Yeah, I mean, he might work and study all day, right? Uni, you know, it's very different. Yeah, I, I, I have some some players. Yeah, that he's like Calvin, for example. He's full on with. His um, chemistry course and stuff, like, you know, insane stuff. He used to do labs and stuff. He comes home and he struggles. He's like, well, how do I play with intensity? You know, he plays like one or two games and that's it. It's just his schedule. Two blocks are real. I've had quite a few people in the MLA do two blocks. I mean, if you can do three, but but two has actually worked for quite a few people. Mm. So you might want to experiment with doing two blocks. So one way diet, you can think about sleep, it. sleep, exercise are the core three. Diet, sleep, exercise, and then, and then um, yeah. two blocks you can experiment with. So he might, he might do a three block. And then push himself to do a two block, you know, something like yeah. that. And then yeah, ease so, into it. Yeah. I mean, I think definitely it's, I also think it should be important for him to try when he feels like he can't play it. And try like, like go get that motivational video, dig deep, get that playlist. Cause if you do it, then you're like, oh, I can actually finish off this block. Yeah. Get that playlist, get that song. And even, that if prep. He, even if he played those games with like not perfect intensity, you it's know, fine. it might be okay. It's like, yeah. well, it's, you've got to start somewhere, right? Yeah. You build it up. You build the stamina. You got to train your your mind. Mm. So we have with that one. Yeah, he says he wants to be able to do six to nine games a day, but with high intensity. You can't do that. Yeah, I think you can easily do nine a day. Yeah, if you have a full day and you sleep well, you eat well, you exercise after your first block, um, you eat you well with your good food and um, yeah, take plenty of breaks. Our right, next one here is from Niall. 
Hey, MLA. Dealing with win streaks. Hello, Nathan Curtis. I'm Noel from the MLA, the Midlane Academy. My question revolves around mentally dealing with win streaks. Personally, I've internalized not focusing on the LP and only focusing on my level of play. However, this seems to progressively go out the window when I get onto a win streak. When I start to win six games in a row, I can mentally feel myself to start to value the LP. I feel like I'm wearing a backpack and with every extra win, someone puts another rock into it. It eventually gets to the point where the inevitable losses start to bum me out. I do lose confidence due to those individual losses, but my focus changes from improvement to LP. Usually I end up taking a few day long break after or during a win streak in order to empty the backpack before I play anymore. Um, note this is only for win streaks. When I lose streak, I'm able to keep my eyes off the LP. So when he's losing, is you know if he's maybe going even, mm. he doesn't worry about it. So his question is, how do you not emphasize the high highs while also gaining confidence from increasing your level of play? I have struggled with this myself. Mm. No. So um, you're not alone with this one. Look, okay, speaking just purely, this is not scientific or anything, it's just me and my experiences. Pseudoscience. Yeah, pseudo <laughs> pseudoscience, like if, if you will. Um, two things. Um, I like comparing my gameplay with someone that's better than me. And what that does, it's like, dis it, it really, it's like a, a Helps to put it in perspective. Yeah, it's like, I'm winnings, but... It's like, I'm not, like, like I'm, I'm just, not expecting to be 1KL. Like, look at this guy. Yeah. This is what 1KLP play looks like. Like, I'm just, like, I, 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 I'm still shit. You yeah. know, it's like, yeah. it's like, put that in perspective. You, you're sort of like zooming out and mm. thinking, you know, you talked the last episode about looking at your play over six months versus yeah. he's just thinking about that day, you mm. know? So like actively just comparing it and just looking at like, it's like, oh, I thought I played well and you know, I might be playing well for my standard, but then there's a whole nother, like this is what's possible. I the, I did this a lot when I was playing with Fizz, a lot of Fizz. Um, and I was like, yeah, I'm winning, but it's still ugly. It's not, it's, not a, it's not a great way to win. So that's a great technique. And that a lot of time centers yourself. You're like, because you're not going to, weigh those wins too much just the, the in a way you treat them mentally kind of like a loss um and i would say the other one is taking breaks and getting specific in reviews so taking breaks in the sense that if you feel as though it's coming on like sometimes it's a it's a sign that you just didn't take a day off from the game and like just get out just get out of that sulky mindset mm. in a way sometimes mm. the sulky mindset just wears on you and the other one like i said was get specific so yes you won but how did you win like, what did you do well specifically? And what did you do poorly? So, like, you can get away with, like, a poor skirmish and winning that skirmish. But there's always ways better to do it. Like, the more specific you get with your ability optimization. The less you focus on the LP. The less LP you focus on LP rank. because it's like, well, I kind of got lucky here, you know? Yeah. It's like, oh, I, I, I did this. Like, I just happened to be here. I actually didn't even... I had no idea what side to lean on. I just happened to lean on top side. And there was this. And, you know, just being honest with yourself. And just taking the time to get specific rather than, like having that blase mentality in the review those are i'd say the three things that i would give advice for for me that have worked because the higher you get especially when you win streak it can it can like fill your head with like oh, i'm just great yeah like you know it's like uh, what well, if i just maintain this like i'll be look at this i'll be like 500 or whatever yeah and you just start focusing the lp you're like i can't i don't want to lose now and then when you start losing you overemphasize those losses so. and then improvement mindset out the window yep it's out all out the window you're not thinking about yep. the, the game plays out the window you're just playing the game and then that's where you have those huge drops that's right hope right. that helps Niall yep no, hopefully we see some progress in the MLA. I guess Curtis will be able to keep close eyes on you. He's done a great job, you. though. Shout out to Niall. He's actually done a great job. Yeah, what's his journey been like? He came in at D3, D3, I think. <laughs> I think it was D, D, D4, D3, or maybe something like that. And then he was, now he's like 3, 400 LP. Crazy. So he's done a great job. He, he put in the work in the 1v1s. Or it might have been D, D4 or something like that. He's put in the work in the 1v1s. He's champ mastery, Zoe, just just grinded. And I told him as well, when he was struggling in diamond, I said, you're, you, it will be easier for you to climb when you get to like 100, 200 LP master than it will be in D3 because of the nature of the champion. Like people know how to play with Zoe and Got it's a more fast paced yeah, pressure yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. So I said like, you get through it, just stick with it. Mm. And then he says it has been easier for him. So it's he, actually easier. He's finding yeah. the games easier in like three, 400 LP master than in like D2 or whatever, which makes sense. I told him that this was going to happen. I told him and it is. It's just some champs are just better in high elo games, mm. uh, which is interesting. Same with TF and stuff like that as well. 
But yeah. um, yeah, shout out to Nara. He's doing a great job. Yeah. Excellent job. To prop up one of my salty members, Curtis. Yep. Time to advertise. Uh, I'm excited. I'm doing an interview with him tomorrow just to talk about oh, his great. journey. Yeah, I love those. Gold two to master in one season. That's incredible. Can you believe that? Is that real? Gold two to Literally master. Literally gold. And this was like a gold gold two player. Like, real, real gold. Like real never gold been above two. gold. No. Nah. What does he play? He played, well, originally he played Olaf. He came from an Olaf guy. Yep. And then he became an Eve one trick. So what did he get? What rank did he get to with Olaf? Where did he switch? He switched, I'm pretty sure, when he got Platinum 4. And then he played Eve. Okay, so Gold 2, to Platinum Plat 4, four Olaf. Yeah. And then you did, released an Eve guide, right? Yeah. And so he swatched to Eve yeah. off that guide? Yeah. Roughly around then? Yeah. And he doubled with a bit of Rek'Sai, but he didn't get much success. So he just basically just Eve, one trick. Eve one trick, yeah. Yeah, one trick. To Masters, and yeah. And then, wow. How crazy is that? That's pretty incredible. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a world record, dude. Do you think that's a world record? I think that's a world record. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty crazy. I know, because Tim did uh, like plat, what did he do? I think he did like, yeah, plat two to D1. I've, I know guys that I've coached before, like gold three to D4, but at gold two to master, that's hard. Because that yeah. D, I wouldn't ever think they would get over that D2 hump. Yeah. Like he height, was stuck there for the last three Mars months. That D2 to master is brutal. Last three months, two months, but yeah, just literally on the weekend, he, he powered through his promos. Wow. That's impressive. It is impressive. What's his name? Ishan. Shout out to Ishan. He was in the book club in one of our sessions. I think the kind of homie. He hasn't been there for a while. Yet. Right. Um, but I mean, I would say, I mean, I'm doing an interview because I just want to show so, like... Yeah, what's he, the learning? He, he's very... I mean, he, I mean, he's a student of the game. How old is he? Uh, I'm not sure. He's definitely younger than us. He's he probably in like early 20s. Yeah, he's in university. College. He goes to like one of the Ivy League schools. Right. So he's, he's definitely a very smart okay. guy. I'll say well, I mean, smart, smart doesn't being I know I'd say smart okay. but very motivated and very humble great humble guy so he's managing his ego he's yeah an ego. he was always a student of the game he he got other coaching as well he didn't just get mine as well I mean, these are the things I think we're going to find in it um, but I just want to just get you know do it and um, who did he get coaching who else did he get coaching from uh, Vega V2 I think he did a bit of Zen coaching as well watched lots of videos all that sort of stuff holy shit so he went ham he was, he was motivated like you know he, he wanted he wanted it. Yeah. I mean, you can't make have those results without really, really wanting it. He started the game. And he, we did so many reviews, you know? Like, mm. I mean, he literally, he's been in Salty for 13, 14 months. I think he joined August last year. Wow. So Long term. He's like one of, I think he is the longest. Oh, so it wasn't member. just this season? No. Oh, well, I mean, it's like a year, right? So when did he start? So he started August of last year. Yeah. Gold two. But what did, oh, so he went from gold, so he finished gold last year. Uh, no, he finished platinum one, I think. Yeah, platinum one, I think. But this season he's gone from plat, plat one to master. Yeah, well, remember the end? That was like so. That was a very fast climb as well, wasn't it? So we're from gold two to gold two to plat, plat one, one. Yeah, in from August to November. Yeah, August, September, October, November. So it's like four months. Yeah, ish four and a half months. He went yep. from gold two to plat one. Yeah. And then this season went from plat one to master tier. Well, that makes sense then. So it's plat one to master tier, yeah. really, yeah. in this season. Yeah. Okay. Because I thought you meant like in this season. Oh, okay. That's why I thought when yeah. you said gold two to master tier. Yeah, in I meant like season, a one year. Yeah. Like one season's a short period of time yeah. comparatively to a year. That's true. The season's way less than a That's year. That's right. Season's like nine months, eight yeah. months, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So maybe it's not that exciting. No, it's still insane. It's pretty it's good. It's insane. Yeah. Getting to master tier is insane. It is. It's great, dude. And if you look at his tier graph, it's pretty steady. Some bumps, but pretty steady overall. Yeah, I'd love to. You should share some of those um, findings on the yeah, BBC next, next episode. Week. Yeah, be great. Awesome. Any more questions? Or we wrapping it That's up? That's it. We'll wrap it up there. All right, everyone. Good work. Let's keep on improving. We'll see you in our next review session, which is I say my soul too. But we'll see you in the next episode.